Hello all you lads and lasses of the pipe smokers of Ireland community. This is the pipe pastor and uh, this is my my Monday residence post. Uh, for those of you that care to listen, it seems like last week's residence post on, on um, discrimination, I don't think any, anybody but Phil Hargraves watched it. Thank God for my YouTube community because they they watch a bunch of them watched it, but I don't know whether you did watch it or you sit thinking he makes 30 minute videos. That's too long for me. I'm not going to watch it. Or you watched it and didn't give a shite. Anyway, I'm back. My third video since a long layoff and. Um, and I deem this a privilege I do not want to take for granted or abuse. And I'm grateful that, that CARE and our new administrator, Roger Lee Thompson, have allowed me to stay even though I, I was months without making a video. Thank you for my son Nick, who filled in for me while I was gone. And Nick and I, I'm planning on doing more videos with Nick as we go along. I appreciate Kerr's recent video, which he, for an Irishman, was kind of uh, soft and tender. And uh, basically, he made uh, the video and he said a lot of things, but basically, <laughs> all that Irish lad was saying was, I love you guys. Glad that that uh, our sibling bickering uh, about t-shirts and the like has uh, has moved on. We have them occasionally on this site. I think other sites have made fun of us for it, saying that we're a lot of drama and, and so forth on this site. But I, I really think the reason that we have any drama at all, and it's not very much, but when we do have some, um, it's just sibling bickery. It's just, it's just the, the frustration factor of um, trying to get things done and having people sign on but not be committed and then care gets stuck with a, all kinds of responsibilities and expenses that he should never have to. As a pastor, when it comes to getting people committed, getting people signing on the dotted line, showing up fulfilling their commitment that kind of thing it, it, the, the politics of that just it ruins the joy out of service it really does so i get all that and, and if we're going to do anything as a group whether it's a project whether it's a t-shirt whether it's a pipe there is always going to be room for conflict and tension and drama and so we, we either never do that never get t-shirts never get nice pipes or we're going to do that. We're going to have our times where it's no fun. And I'm sorry for, for care's sake because uh, he he uh, carries this whole thing in his heart. His emotions are all out there on the table, as emotional as an Irishman can get, which is basically we get tired and irritable. And uh, But I appreciate care's video and congratulating us all on moving on and keeping up and, he, and as tired as he was it looks like he's having fun again so so that's great young care and, and uh, say hello to your lovely wife and your son Finch. a little bit more pictures please keep us up to date notice with care's videos He's never given us any pictures of the food that they eat over in Ireland because Irish can't cook. All the Irish can cook is potatoes. And uh, every once in a while they might cook something ghastly like liver or uh, kidneys. I think it's the English that eat the jellied eel and the congealed blood. But the Irish, they have some funky foods. That's why I'm, I'm glad I'm half Sicilian. Because Sicilians can cook, man, you know, and I'm glad for that. But but the Irish side of me, I got to tell you, I could eat potatoes for every meal, man. I love potatoes, and I love Guinness. 
And I love me a wee bit of Jameson. Hey, do you see the new Jameson that's come out? I think it's got like some Guinness in it or something. Guess what? Uh, this is the kind of pastor I am. After service this morning, I led worship and preached this morning. I was soaking wet, man. It's hot here. 94 right now at 7. <coughs> uh, 7 o'clock. 14 degrees humidity, so it's dry. But So I was sweating this morning, man. I was working it up come out of service and go in my car and someone left in my car a great big fifth of that new Jameson that dark Jameson what the heck kind of person to leave a pastor something like that anyway I got it so uh, I think I'm gonna give it to my son Nick and then let him share it with me a little bit because I, I don't drink that much and and uh, so I know he would enjoy it a lot more than I do. So the good news is I stopped talking about the consequences of ideas and, and all of that. I'm moving on. But I'm excited about what I'd like to talk to you guys about. Because my, my shtick, if you will, here is being me, being the pipe pastor, and a pastor that smokes pipes uh, is kind of novel, shouldn't be. Most of the theologians that made any difference in in uh, in where we're at today, theologically, were pipe smokers or cigar smokers, and it shouldn't be novel, but it is, and it works on YouTube for guys to sit around and have a pipe with a pastor. And, listen to what he has to say put up what he has to say so in any case uh, let me tell you I want to speak about a particular book of the Bible I'm not going to read it but I think you will and I want you to I'd like you to read a chapter a week and keep up with me because you're going to have questions man if there's any book in the Bible that'll make you question things, it will be this book. As a matter of fact, this book asks questions Christians won't ask. They won't ask these kinds of questions because they're not easy to answer. This book can lead you to commit suicide. Because if you don't know how to read it, it is so pessimistic and without hope <clears throat> in its absolute statements. And again, remember, this is the wisest man who has ever lived. Smartest, brightest, most intelligent, and on top of that, gifted with added intelligence that has ever lived. Writing at the late stages of his life. Proverbs was earlier, Ecclesiastes was later, and you're kind of getting him summing up what he's learned not just by thinking but by experiencing it's Ecclesiastes was an entire experiment man on pleasure he experimented on the pleasure of everything building making money having sex enjoying alcohol working and this is the sum of it all and if you don't know how to read it, dude, it, it, it will bum trip you. It's, it's sort of a, a tough book to read. But it is the premier book of the Bible a pipe smoker would read. It's built for pipe smokers and hobbits. And uh, it's, an it's an incredible book, very controversial. Many people had bad things to say about it in writing about the book of Ecclesiastes who were scholars and theologians. Because it was, it, it is so, dis, it, it leads you to pessimism and despair. If you don't know how to read it. And if you do know how to read it, it leads you to hope and, and to a hobbit's philosophy of simple pleasures and enjoying make most of your life. So... I want to talk about chapter one of Ecclesiastes. Chapter one is probably one of the worst chapters of the Bible. The way it opens, nobody opens a book like, like chapter one of the book of Ecclesiastes. 
But basically, this is the question that Ecclesiastes is trying to answer. Is there any meaning to life at all? What is the purpose for my life? Why am I getting up every day and doing this and doing that? And why am I struggling so much? What, what is it worth anything? What really is the, is the bottom line of all of this? Is this all there is? Is there more? Why am I here? So it's talking about meaning. It's talking about purpose. It's talking about uh, significance. And I'll talk about this at length next week. But there were certain philosophers trying to answer this question, predominantly the children of, of hedonism. And the two children of hedonism were the Epicureans and uh, the Stoics. And both of them were siblings, but they were both coming at the question from opposite directions. Um, the Epicureans and the Stoics were both interested in how to achieve ataraxia, A-T-A-R-A-X-I-A, -A -A, Greek word, which basically means uh, peace of mind. And uh, they were looking to answer the question of how do I enjoy peace of mind, stability, uh, groundedness, being able to live in the here and in the now, savoring, enjoying my life. Oh, the, the Stoics answered that question, and both of them, by the way, were interested in, in avoiding pain. How can I avoid pain, and how can I maximize pleasure? And uh, the Stoics thought, that they could achieve ataraxia uh, through, and by the way, ataraxia basically boiled down, it means imperturbability. Get into the place where nothing bothers you. And uh, they thought that they could get to the place of ataraxia through imperturbability, that nothing bothers them. So they may not be able to avoid the, the uh, fact of pain but they believe that they could get to the place where pain doesn't bother them. But the, the problem with Stoics is they, they understood that pleasure involves pain. You know, if you, if you go out and you party all night long, that's pleasurable. But the next morning you may wake up with a hangover. That's painful. And uh, so they wanted to get, it's sort of the Vulcan way of life. You know, if you watch Star Trek, the Vulcans were, were Stoics. And... Uh, the way they thought to do that was by getting to the place where they were not moved by anything. They didn't enjoy something. They didn't not enjoy it. They just what got to the place where nothing moved them whatsoever. And uh, they had no highs. They had no lows. You ask them if they're in pain, no. They got to this nirvana stage of not committing themselves to the here and now. Their siblings were Epicureans. And uh, they wanted to avoid the pain of excess pleasure or excessive anything and so they did that through the active but controlled pursuit of pleasure in the active avoidance of pain or discomfort by the way in which they engaged in pleasure now I talk about ataraxia more next week that's that's the driving force of today people are pushing toward it to them the meaning of life is ataraxia uh, being able to enjoy it with peace of mind being being uh, being able to wall off from them the discomforts and the pains and the stresses and so forth of life the hobbits philosophy getting back to the book of Ecclesiastes when I preached on it and by the way 
if this piques your interest and you want to hear my sermons on it, they're on this website, thelegacychurch.net. And it, it, you get on that site and you'll see a picture of us and so forth and so on and uh, the links and you'll see media. You just click on media and podcasts and it's under the meaning of life part one and two. A lot more information there if you find this interesting. But uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, I entitled in my sermon, All We Are is Dust in the Wind with a question mark. It's a famous pop song in America, and uh, the the the, uh, the chorus was "All we are is dust in the wind." So, is that true? All we are is dust in the wind. Because if you read the ch first chapter of Ecclesiastes, you get there. It's not for the faint of heart. Reading Ecclesiastes, especially the first chapter, not for the faint of heart. It takes courage. Ecclesiastes is just a Hebrew word for preacher or philosopher. The preacher or philosopher writing the book is Solomon. And uh, here's a problem. Solomon confuses you because he makes absolute truth statements throughout the book. But he is at, he's making those statements based on two opposite sides of the coin. It doesn't tell you when he switches hats. So he may spend most of the chapter talking about the futility and the meaningless of life without ever telling you that uh, he's speaking from the side of a secular atheist or a secular humanist. And then he'll finish out the chapter uh, with a sentence or two from the side of a theist or a believer. But he never tells you when he's switching around. And so what you're thinking is this is the smartest man in the world who was a believer in God who's giving us a very pessimistic and despairing philosophy of life that that is, is a, different than anything else in the Bible. You know, most of the Bible will <clears throat> talk about hoping in God and believing in God and you can do it with God and God's going to make a difference. And uh, Ecclesiastes does not do that, obviously. And uh, so you may be talking like a hedonist, a, a existentialist, a secularist, uh, leading to conclusions that are pessimistic and despairing, as if he believed in them. And, uh, and then he summarizes the whole point with hope, and it, it, it just confuses you. You know, it was the book of Ecclesiastes that inspired Herman, uh, 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 Ernest Hemingway, to write his novel, The Sun Also Rises. We'll talk about more of that uh, next week. But The Sun Also Rises was, was a book influenced by a phrase in the book of Ecclesiastes. Which basically is a term, the sun also rises, which can be interpreted two ways, very pessimistically, meaning you can work every day of your life, work hard, accrue it, accrue money, do whatever you want, nothing's going to change. Tomorrow morning, the sun's going to rise. You didn't make a difference. Or, it's very optimistic, meaning that, you know, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, type thing. Well, Hemingway, most of his novels were written from an existentialist, pessimistic existentialist point of view. And after spending his whole time studying about the meaningless and the purposeless of life, probably finding great uh, agreement from the book of Ecclesiastes, he gets up one morning in July, very early, and uh, he kisses his wife goodbye and then takes a double barrel 14 gauge shotgun and blows his head off. Does a Kurt Cobain from Nirvana did the same thing. And after watching yet again 
in another presidential election year, the presidential debates in America, American presidential debates, the question is, wouldn't you blow your head off if that's if this is all there is, is that? But uh, basically the book of Ecclesiastes is saying that everything that you do under the sun is empty and it's futile and it's meaningless and it's whether working or whether it's it's accruing money or whether it's fighting whether it's building whether it's drinking whether it's carousing doesn't matter what you do and what you accomplish in the end it is meaningless it's futile let's go to First chapter of Ecclesiastes says, All we are is dust in the wind, without a question mark. So I want to conclude by giving you some code words. Some, some keys of working your way through the book of Ecclesiastes that will help you even if you come up to the edge, not go over into the abyss of despair and pessimism and, and, and be able to get the true message of the book, which is a hobbit's philosophy. Enjoy your food, enjoy your work, enjoy your wife. That one of the ways that you can honor God in your life and find meaning in your life is to enjoy your life. Direction in the Bible? Yep. American novelist Thomas Wolfe wrote this about the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, of all I have ever seen or learned, the book of Ecclesiastes seems to me the noblest, wisest, and the most powerful expression of a man's life on earth, and also the highest flower of poetry, of eloquence, and truth. Now, I am not given to dogmatic judgments in the matter of literary creation, but if I had to make, uh, uh, but if I had to make one, I could say that Ecclesiastes is the greatest single piece of writing I have ever known and the wisdom expressed in it the most lasting and the most profound. Bang! Book of Ecclesiastes, man. Here's some key words for you. You read in the book of Ecclesiastes. Number one. Excuse me. Number one. You start reading the chapter one. And uh, chapter one starts out with negative superlatives. It's the most pessimistic first sentence of anything ever written in the Bible. And, and and what punches you in the nose over and over again is this particular word. You might see it translated differently depending on what it's translated as. Vapor, vanity, meaninglessness, or meaningless, or purposelessness, or smoke, or wind, or breath, or odor. Um, it, it could be translated as uh, absurd, ironic, futile, useless, vanity, fleeting, temporal, transitory, worthless, fruitless, uh, foul in respect to something repulsive, empty, uh, folly, hollow, unsubstantial, and insignificant and those are the meanings of this tr this principal word hevel in hebrew it's h-e-b-e-l but it's translated with a v hevel 
And basically what he's saying is the sum of human existence is Hevel. Oh, dude, that's, that's wrong, man. I mean, how do you get up in the morning motivated by Hevel? And so, yes, he uses this term. It's uh, basically a term that um, leads the existential philosopher to the conclusion that the only meaningful thing you could do in life is commit suicide. Yeah, because if this is all there is and you just get up every morning and, and, and uh, you're, you're, you're like Sisyphus and you're, you're cursed with trying to push that rock up the mountain for eternity, only when you just get to the top and you're ready to crest the peak, you fall down and the rock falls down, you have to start all over again. And this is the curse on your life forever. This is what you're going to be doing for eternity, pushing the rock up, never getting it to the top. And if that's all there is, the existential philosopher will say, then we might as well just kill ourselves because they came to the conclusion that human life is a useless passion. But there's a qualifier. And you'll notice this. Solomon doesn't really speak about God much in the book of Ecclesiastes. He doesn't, he doesn't use the term God. He may use the term creator, but he qualifies this conclusion that human life is indeed a useless passion. And he admits it. Human life is meaningless. It's futile. It's vain. It's insignificant. When it's lived under the sun, and that's the second key word and key phrase. He keeps using that phrase over and over again, under the sun. And when he writes under the sun, he's writing it from a secular humanist point of view. Seculari in French means here and now. So secular humanism denies that there's anything transcendent. There's nothing above physical, natural life. You live like a dog, you die like a dog, and, and that's it. And so commercials are, are rife. We used to have an old commercial for Michelob that said, um, you only go around once in life, grab for all the gusto you can, and it was a Michelob beer commercial. It's basically, if this is all there is, it's like Groundhog's Day. If you ever watched the Bill Murray movie, Groundhog's Day, great movie. It's just, it's just like, if the, every day is just a repetition, and this is all there is, here and now, and there's nothing after we die, then you're either going to be a hedonist, a stoic, or you're just going to kill yourself. Because it's boring, all right? It's written from a secular point of view. Under the sun, atheist point of view. There's no God, there's no heaven. It's a John Lennon's imagine. Imagine there's no heaven, no hell. No God before us, above us, only sky. That is under the sun philosophy, according to Solomon. He also follows that through with another phrase, under heaven. Now, when he talks about under heaven, then he's assuming there's a heaven, not the heavenly, he's the heaven. And that's how he talks about God. And what he's saying is that there's a difference between life lived by someone who only believes that they're living under the sun and someone who believes that they are living under heaven, which transcends the sun that there is a day of accountability, that there is a God, that that God has expressed his desire for how we live out our lives, that, that God created us with pleasure. In fact, the, uh, the answer to the Westminster Confession, which uh, asked the question, what is the purpose for man? The answer to the question is to know God and enjoy him forever, or enjoy God and glorify him forever, how you want to say it. So enjoyment is a big deal. God made us to enjoy our lives. And when we enjoy our lives uh, moderately, that's very close to honoring God, and worshiping God, and being true to God. And so that's uh, chapter one of the book of Ecclesiastes. And the, the statement, which I made a question is, are we... Is all we are is dust in the wind? And the answer is no. Uh, 
we're more than that depending on what you believe. I'll talk to you next week about this. This is Pipe Pastor signing off. God bless you. Slauncha.